Hello and welcome to the Treehouse Festival. Uh, this is a little video we're going to put together about all the stuff that goes on. It all started a few years ago when um, a group of uh, friends and I uh, left university and wanted to carry on building because we used to build at university. And um, uh, our objective was, after hearing one of the guys in our group, his adventures when he was younger, um, building tree houses, we said, well, let's give that a go. And uh, we carried on our tradition of what we called scalvaging, where we'd go and speak to the local businesses and people who had skips and throwing stuff away and said, uh, could we have the stuff that you're throwing away? And um, <coughs> and then we'd get that, bring it back, and uh, eventually we built this giant tree house out of it, uh, which we'd all built and recycled materials and without using any electricity. And it was uh, quite a grand structure, it had double glazed windows, it had uh, carpets, spiral staircase and a balcony, two floors, and uh, it was right in the middle of remote Norfolk uh, countryside, and you couldn't see it from anywhere, which was great. And a few years down the line, uh, about halfway through building it, we uh, came up to some uh, some opposition from the local council who asked us uh, to get to get planning permission for it, which we applied for, and uh, and then after a massive battle with uh, lots of media attention and lots of uh, lots of debate and appeals and and letters and stuff, uh, we eventually had to take the treehouse down, sadly. But uh, our, because of that, a lot of people had got on board and had said, "Well, this is really great what you're doing." So they said they wanted to get involved each year. So we said, "Well, let's." do it a bit bigger and, and uh, have something called the Treehouse Festival, which is where we are up to now. Our next project now is, uh, is the Roundhouse, which you can see behind me. Quite a big bit of what we're doing is, um, is building the Roundhouse. It's a really good focus of community. We're actually cooking inside it, even though the roof isn't finished up there. And um, and yeah, and, and loads of different people uh, of all different skill levels, people from the city, people from the country, people who have never been and done anything like this before, having a go at thatching and doing crafts that sometimes haven't been done in the way that we're doing them for, for hundreds of years. This stuff here is miscanthus, and uh, the Iron Age people, of course, would have used uh, Norfolk reed because it's readily available, but now Norfolk reed is a very expensive commodity for uh, thatching, and so uh, people who harvest reed tend not to give it away for free, especially if it's just going to be used for thatching anyway. So the way we got around that was kind of, we kept in the spirit of what the Iron Age people would have done. We looked at what was local to us, and... Um, and yeah, and, and a number of local farmers, about three local farmers, were given big grants in um, a few years ago by the European Union to grow miscanthus, which is elephant grass and is a type of bamboo grass. And um, it grows in uh, it grows in the Far East, but they were given a grant to grow it for biofuels and to power power stations. And then when the economic crash came in 2008, uh, those grants fell through, and so these farmers found themselves with uh, with huge. Uh, huge uh, swathes of land full of, uh, full of miscanthus and they didn't really know what to do with it and um, uh, gradually it's, it's being dug up and replaced by crops that actually produce money uh, but until that time they say we can go down there and cut it all um, and use it for the roundhouse here. I spent almost the whole day yesterday on the roof which was fun and uh, collected such and these are the results of all the stuff. <laughs> so I'm all covered with scratches, but it's fun. One of the fun things to do is you take a group of people down to said farm and uh, you take a big armful of, uh, of the reed which is in a uh, in a, a root plant and you take about 50 stalks at once. One person holds them and the other goes along meticulously, cuts each one at the bottom and then you, you group it together, put it on the trailer on, and rope it on top of the car or hang it out in the back and then drive down the road back and then uh, and then it, it's stripped and then given to, to the guys who are, are thatching, which anyone is having a go at and you don't need any particular skill. And, um, yeah, and then it turns into a roundhouse eventually. Uh, what we're doing here is stripping off the leaves from the myscanthus so that it's just the woody bit which we can put on the reef. I'm participating, obviously. I'm participating. I'm stripping at the moment. In my mind, I'm stripping. So you go right from the bottom 
like she leaves right at the bottom, then you just go up and up, stripping off the leaves at a time. And then you have to get up right to the point where it stops being sticky at all and it just leaves. We're securing this that we did last night and we couldn't see it. So Ben's we're just finishing off these where these two pieces meet. So Ben's just putting a needle through. Is he on the inside? Yeah, oh, there we go. And we'll pull it around. Pop it back through again. So this is the stand this is the the basics of what it is to thatch then, is it? To hold it all together, yeah. I'm doing the interior needle work. So I'm poking it out around the interior pole and then there's an in a crossing like you want to call it. and then there's an exterior one that goes round both them, binds them together like a sandwich, and squeezes the thatch as the fill of the sandwich between the two. And then you do it on multiple layers, so each bit of thatch should hopefully be held in by two, maybe three. It should be really tight. Hey Rob, what are you doing there? I'm, uh, well, we're molesting. Sort of, yeah, we sort of call it molesting the thatch. Basically what it is, is when the thatch goes on, here, you see it goes in bundles, all at the same height, and it's supposed to be a smooth progression. So these have all been pre-molested already, and these ones need to get rid of all the, the ends. So to blend this in, you push the top ones up, so they're about a foot away from the next bat, um, baton, and kind of blend it in. So, right. which is invisible and it's one seamless kind of hill of thatch and that's, that's how it works and it takes a long time and it hurts your arm because you get to this bit of wood. Oh of course, yeah, good on that. Cool. Um, as you can see, I'm waking up because uh, our method of thatching has uh, sort of evolved as we went along. So at first we were just grabbing the stuff and putting it straight up on the roof. We weren't even trying to get it all the right way round, etc. Um, soon realised that that wasn't good, so we started putting it the right way round. And then we discovered that all the leaves made problems. It wasn't tight enough, so we've had to take it off a couple of well, bits of it off a couple of times. But we strip all the leaves, but it's massively labour intensive. Um, you know, each uh, individual bit has to be effectively individually stripped, uh, cut to length, um, and then put up in bundles and what have you. So um, I'm currently raking up all the stuff that's been stripped off, um, which is a never-ending uh, task. It's a bit like painting the fourth bridge. As soon as you've raked up one area, you have to like kind of go back and rake it up again because uh, it's uh, it's back again. different stuff we're having we this morning we just had it we had a talk from Greenpeace who came in and uh, talked about the stuff they're doing we had an acoustic night where uh, where people from around come and uh, do little bits of their talents and Beach trips. We had a paintballing adventure the other day, and uh, and generally a really good time. Um, what is your involvement in the Trios Festival? Mm. Uh, communal, communal work, dancing around, enjoying myself. Uh, yes, Being nice building. Funny. Yeah, making everybody smile and having a fantastic time. Do you have Even you? in the rain, if it rains. <laughs> have you come here before? I have been here before several times. And have a uh, very good time every year. I'm back every year. Let's say it's that good without fail. Yeah, without fail. Doesn't even matter if anybody else is here or not. 
<laughs> you just show up. I'm just here. Yeah. Pilgrimage every year. Okay, go on. So basically, this is the door. What we're going to do is um, we're going to get the willow and uh, weave these um, back in on themselves to get the door frame out of the willow, right? And do that all the way around with a curved top to match the archway of the roundhouse. Yeah. Um, then we're going to support it across um, at certain intervals with willow weave through so it's got some kind of uh, sturdiness because this wouldn't last very long if we didn't. Yeah, but after right. that, we've got plans, right? It's so we've got the door, yeah. yeah. Then we're going to make a carpet out of this because it's nice and cushy for the roundhouse. And after we've got a carpet, we're going to make a shoe rack. And how we're going to make our shoe rack is strips of this weaved in on themselves with the uh, logs supporting each end tied round. It'd be beautiful. Right? In the beginning, in the beginning there was tents, and then. Um, there was drinking and campfires, and then there wasn't, thing, there wasn't much else to begin with. And then there was nothing to do for a bit, so we built, we started building a treehouse. And I think I put the first bit of wood in um, for the treehouse. I nailed it to the tree. So despite the hype that we didn't put any nails in the tree, I personally did put some nails in the tree. <laughs> um, but then we started doing it properly without nails in the tree. And then we built the treehouse, and then it was great, and that, that kept us busy for a while. And then someone, then the council took it down, made us take it down. So we then we didn't have the treehouse anymore. So we decided to build the roundhouse, which this is this is the second attempt at a roundhouse. The first one blew down, um, unfortunately, because we didn't we didn't have any way to attach it, and we didn't really make it very well. But then yeah, so then we started the roundhouse uh, during a building party, and, and it kind of developed at the treehouse festival, and now. We just have several building parties a year, and yeah, that's what I, I come to some of them and all of them. But I come this week because I, um, cause it's good. Because I wanted to get the thatch finished, which it won't and it's never seems to finish. It just keeps going up and up and never ending. This is a uh, a teepee we quite crudely made. Um, friend and I drove down to uh, to London and uh, got some really cheap old canvas from a canvas marquee, and then cut it up and got some plans off the internet. So we went down the, the road to a friend of ours who let us cut down um, some coppice, some maple coppice, and uh, that's pretty much it. You tie it around uh, 12 of these poles and then uh, you got a teepee. What type of people come to the treehouse festival? Yeah. Um, people who like community, who want to get along, um, who like <coughs> doing interesting things. Yeah, and just hanging out really and enjoying the outdoors. Every evening, um, uh, people build a big fire, normally strong men, who so can uh, chop wood and fell trees and the like, and, uh, and build a fire that goes on until Ben goes to bed. I normally go to bed a bit sooner, so I don't know how long it lasts for. It's about one o'clock now. And people, about one o'clock now. And people are <laughs> generally chat, there's no organised games. Uh, play lots of guitar, sing some songs. Um, it's the best kind of time to get to chat to people you haven't spoken to before, really. So, so there's been a few times this evening we've got to have deep and meaningfuls with people I've never met before. And the great thing about the Treehouse Festival for me is there's always a mix of people I do know and people I don't know, people I've seen before and lots of people I haven't seen before. And I don't think there's been one year I've gone where I haven't come away with anybody care for quite a few people who I have then considered from then on good friends and long term friends who I've never met before that week. There's always a fire every night and always at some point during the night there's gonna be a guitar around and it gets passed around. Anyone can have a play. 
Everyone has a sing song. People who can sing, people who can't sing, well, same sound really. And uh, it's really cool. People like to improvise, people like to play the songs they know, some people play funny songs. Some people like to teach each other guitar riffs. So it's just good that wherever you are around the fire, wherever you are at the treehouse, you're always in hearing distance of someone on a guitar, someone singing, people dance with the new. It's just music everywhere, really. The community is the key thing, really. Um, there's a big group, and everyone is on good terms with everyone else. Everyone talks to everyone else. There are smaller groups within that, people who spend more time with certain people, some people they know and even and people they don't know. But they're so flexible those small groups that everyone flicks between and so everyone gets on very well with everyone. There's no one you can sit down next to and not expect a really fascinating conversation to run. There's no one who uh, it is not for a serious conversation when you need one or the most random piece of ridiculousness when you want that. It's kind of fluid who you talk to. What do you like about the Trios Festival? Um, the people, mostly, I think. Um, because everyone's lovely and inclusive and happy. I like being outside. Uh, I like waking up and being outside and living outside. I like fire and sitting around fire talking to people and that kind of thing. I like making things. The festival is quite unique because it's actually free to come, but we uh, all we ask for is, uh, is that you contribute towards your food, which we do for a phenomenally cheap price, which is great because that means anyone can come, uh, and contribute to the toilet. So it works out as, as just a few pounds for uh, for a week's food and, and everything else. And, uh, and it's a really great place camping in a really remote area of rural Norfolk. And there's not a lot else in the east, so uh, so it's a nice little thing to come to. Hi, um, I'm Dean Reynolds. Dean? Yes, um, I am, um, along with my lovely wife Emily, um, in charge of the cooking um, for the week. And what we do is we get something like this and we turn it into food for everyone. Uh, mostly all vegetarian food. Um, this time we went to a wholesaler. Um, who was very kind and um, managed to give us a really good deal and lots of good food. Yeah. We also went to um, a man called Sam Eglinton, who may not wish to be named, um, who is an organic farmer and he got us some beautiful garlic and other vegetables. Which are also good yeah. um, basically, um, we get a whole team of people to chop vegetables, um, do all the prep stuff. Um, generally, I, myself, or Emily will oversee a meal. And yeah, it's, it's excellent fun, and well, you know, I wouldn't like to yank my own chain or anything like that, but you know, the food's really? excellent. I've done. I would say. This year it's been roughly 40 odd people every night, somewhere between 30 and 40, but mostly towards the 40 yeah. Um, um, so we've been preparing, preparing fairly large scale, and then we have kind of a washing up thing where people, everyone chips in and does a bit of washing up. So what type of meals do you usually cook? Um, generally, they're sort of they have to be one pot wonders really. <laughs> so that would be your curry, your chili, you know, your um, your sweet sweet potato curry. We did one day. We did a noodle dish. Well, so mostly it's uh, non-English stuff, really. Uh, we did a pasta. The, work, the only thing we've done that's kind of traditionally English, I suppose, is the thick vegetable soup. Uh, we've been kind of camping down here in one form or another since uh, since I was about 17, and uh, and some of the people who were there on that original that original camp down here, down the field, in one of the horses' fields, um, they still come to the Treehouse Festival now, nearly 10 years later, which is great. And uh, when we first done it, we, um, uh, we we dug a little fire pit and had a fire down here and had a campfire, and then each year it's grown and expanded. We're now on, on uh, fire number four, our Mark IV, which if you want to just have a look down here, is uh, we turned this one into a, a clay oven, which, is a, so, which we've tried to... Um, yeah, it's not 100% yet because we just need to sort out the way this chimney works. But and the fire bit on top is used pretty much constantly. It's not on right now, but uh, but yeah, it's a great little fire, and uh, it's nice. And no doubt there'll be many more marks 
but it's now instead of being right at the edge of the little campsite bit, it's now right in the dead centre, and uh, and it's grown a lot. So um, so yeah. Well, I didn't say Pilb, Emily, and I are eating an apple. I just <coughs> the camp at large. <laughs> We'll be right near it all the way. I'll use it. I don't use it. I'll 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 use it. So today is Saturday and at the Treehouse Festival Saturday! that's quite a big deal. Yeah. You're a big deal. Um, what we do on Saturday, basically the whole week is kind of leading up to it and uh, the people who've been staying here, there's been about 30 people living here for a week in, uh, in community with each other and then on the last day we, uh, we set up the, be the best party probably in Norfolk today and, um, and right. we've only got three bands. That's cool, we only need three bands. <laughs> uh, we set up a big party on, uh, on the last night where people come from outside the, uh, this little community and, um, and we just set up a big party for them. We have a bar which runs on a, on a non-currency -cur system and, uh, and um, yeah, and bands come from all around the UK and perform and we have a big uh, lighting and sound system and uh, yeah, and it's, an, it's a, a brilliant day. And there'll probably be about two or three hundred people here tonight, hopefully. And um, really? yeah, and they get to see the stuff that we've been doing throughout the week. So, Paul. Hello. Um, what What are you doing here? Uh, I'm here at the Treehouse Party Festival come event and having a good time, even though I'm massively early. <laughs> we've just built the trampoline. Yeah. We found some old bars of metal and some bunch of rusty springs and a bit of material that isn't looking too good and we just put it all together and we're going to make people jump up and down on it so people are going to wander around doing different stuff there'll be bands and drinks and people just like to find cool places to sit and also people like to jump and the more they drink the more they like to jump so who are you guys uh working creatures and what are you doing here uh, trying to set up at the moment <laughs> So what sort of things will you be doing tonight then? Giving out alcohol? Serving drinks? Taking tokens? Uh, usually about five bands, uh, really good music, um, yeah getting drunk, really getting drunk and and collapsing halfway in and halfway out of the tent. Uh, is it true that your mum is here? It is indeed. She is in fact just to my left. Hello. <laughs> so what what are you expecting tonight? Um, see some people I haven't seen in a while, basically. <laughs> Have some fun. <laughs> Stay up late. Pretty much it. Have some fun. Hear some music. Drink, apparently. It's a bar. Um, it's only been like previous years. Expecting to hear some new music and see some old friends. <laughs> you heard about Emily Winehouse? You are? Yeah, yeah. A place to find nicely food for this particular shop. <laughs> I, I felt mildly dirty and then realised it shouldn't be. Are you happy with that? Why, why have you done that then? Because it's very fun. I'll show I you. Suppose. Look! Actually, I've got shoes on. Yeah, you can, well, well, you're not allowed shoes, Ben. Yep. So what are you guys doing here? We're setting up the diary room. It's a room with a diary in it. It's also a room with a camera. camera. It's a room with a camera so people can record their thoughts and feelings about the Treehouse Festival and its organisers, who are hoping for some very positive feedback. Adam Jackson's awesome. Um, so it's a secluded area if you'd like to enter, we can show you. 
with a bench ready for people to come and sit. There will be a camera, you'll have to use your imagination. So we come from France. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Dave in the back row. Come on in, Dave. Hi, Adam. How's it going? Not too shabby. Not too shabby. <laughs> the bands, the bands are really good. Some really good PA there. And, I'm Anna uh, Mae. This is Anna Mae. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Just uh, come in here in the diary room. The diary room. To say how we enjoy the treehouse festival. We love treehouse festival. It's <laughs> so, this is awkward, isn't it? I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. What do I say? They are watching us. They are watching us. <laughs> anyway, Literally also, like I like the token drinking idea. Yeah. That's really yeah. clever. Yeah. Um, I would have bought a t-shirt, but you definitely just yeah, said they sold out. out. And I was amazing. And I love to be of everyone. I love how everyone is different and so colourful. Yeah? Yeah? It's okay, it's okay to say yes to that. Hi guys. Speaking of dark moments. What? So, dark, Dean, right, thanks for being the guest on the show. Yeah. Guys! Guys! Hi. 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 We've got a We've got a few guests on the show tonight. Um, so thank you, welcome. Uh, the We're the treehouses. The treehouses. They call themselves that. We don't actually endorse that. Uh, no. no, we're the roundhouses uh, now. Guys. 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 What guys? Interesting guys. fact. Some of the people guys. there <laughs> believe they are invisible. Yeah. They genuinely Why? believe no one Why? can see them. Troy and Ahmed in the morning. Tell you weren't recording them, were you? No, no. Yeah. We had a good night, some great bands, fantastic music, and a really, really nice atmosphere. Gotcha. Right. Hello there. My name's Ben. Uh, this is my first time at the Treehouse Festival. I did the Kings of Frozen stage, and it went quite swimmingly. Um, <laughs> Of, of this fine, stick. fine farm here, <laughs> Guy and Teresa. Um, obviously, <laughs> obviously, uh, Adam has done a, a lot of organising. Um, he's the camera, he's organised everything. Uh, we've, really we've got to say, you know, after a few interviews, uh, people have thoroughly enjoyed it. But how, how have you found found it being, obviously, uh, living here and having to cope with all of these young strangers on your land? I think genuinely. <laughs> were a bit concerned when we heard that 300... Should I look at this <laughs> camera you rather than you, man? <laughs> Have you ever seen Dad's Army? It's a television program. And what's the name of the... Um, what, what's the name of The Undertaker? And what's his favourite line? We're all doomed! It's all doomed! So that was, well, that's pretty much our opinion last night. <laughs> the barn's going to burn. 
there's going to be all sorts of dreadful things happening. There's going to be uh, <laughs> stuff. But actually, it's fantastic. It's it really is yeah. good. Dreams I've been craving, the thoughts I've been entertaining to be settling down, forcing these sounds from my lips.